Hello there, welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today, I'm going to show you how to draw the Hatbox Ghost from Disneyland's The Haunted Mansion. So come on, let's get started. Alright guys, so... Welcome, foolish mortals. What was that? Welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today, we're going to drop this episode on the 50th anniversary of the Haunted Mansion. Yes, the Haunted Mansion. Uh, who is this? It's me, your ghost host. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the Haunted Mansion opened its doors on August 9th, 1969. So Garrett has requested that we do a tutorial on how to draw the Hatbox Ghost, which is by far my favorite ghost in the mansion. Excuse me. I, I'm sorry. Hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. Okay. Are, are you going to keep interrupting or? It's quite possible. Okay. So sorry. Uh-huh. Sorry. All right. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Let's... Let's just dive in here. All right, so let's just dive in here. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do first is figure out the size and scale of our character. So we've got our circle, right? But I'm going to have him facing this way, but looking right at us. So I'm going to draw his vertical axis just like so and then his horizontal axis, like this, okay? Now, fun fact and some history on this character, he was originally in the Disneyland Haunted Mansion when it first opened. Mike Davis came up with the idea and then Yale Gracie brought it to life. Uh, the effect was, was done with screens and lighting because once it was brought into installation at the Haunted Mansion, uh, what they didn't realize is that it would be uh, located very closely to the Doom Buggies and it was too close for a proper lighting effect. So the character special effects didn't work. So they pulled it from the attraction within the first few days. And there are only grainy photos or even grainier video online. There's not much to see, but it's it's interesting to check out his, his origins there. Okay, enough of that. So what we're going to do, so now we've got a, a head shape in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line of action. And the Hatbox Ghost is resting his weight on a cane. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to um, figure out his anatomy here. Okay, so there's his torso. And let's give him let's really push that that pose a little bit here. His pose isn't nearly as dynamic in the attraction, but I mean, what's the fun of just drawing a straight representation, right? We're going to push this character a little bit. Okay, so uh, I actually don't like that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's much better. Okay, I'll erase that later. Okay, so we've got his hips are like this, so his shoulders should be up like this. So when you're doing a dynamic pose, so we've got his spinal cord here, right? Where the line of action will go. His hips kind of pose like this. So to counterbalance, you want the shoulders to be an opposite angle. It gives proper balance and it'll show some real good weight there. Okay. So now we got that. Let's throw in an arm here. Like so. All of this is really rough right now. 
Here's the cane. Okay, now this one's going to be the, the fun arm. All right, so we're going to push the shoulder up a little bit. Like so. And now we're going to use our foreshortening. For those of you who don't know what foreshortening is, it is, in the terms of, of this drawing here, so we've got his upper arm here like this. We've got, that hand is way too big, but, so the forearm would really start here at the elbow and work its way directly at us here. That's the size of the hand right there. Okay. So now let's really push the size of this hat box. Um, like this. Yeah. So a hat box back in the Victorian days when hats were sold, they were presented in these ornate cylindrical boxes. You know, today we just buy one off of a off of a hanging peg and we're done with it, but not back in those days. So we've got the box right here like so. Now let's go back in and let's throw some detail in here. Let's start with his face. Now we know where his eyes are gonna rest because we've got that horizontal access line, right? So let's draw in some eye sockets here. Uh, like that, great. Okay, so I've got this nice little, his brows kind of furrowed down here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to take this line and we're gonna bring it up like so. Okay. That'll really push the expression for the illustration here. Okay. I'm gonna draw in an eye, in an eye, but I'm going to I'm not just going to give him big wide eyes. I'm going to cut into it a little bit, give him some character. And this eye, because of the brow down here like this, the eye will be, I don't want to say the word squinted, but it'll be significantly smaller. Okay, now let me just double down here. I'm not going to change that angle because I like it already. I'm going to darken in that line. Okay. Now on this side, give him that furrow brow and I'll shade in around the eye socket like that. Okay. Now his nose, His nose will come out like so, but all we see are nostrils. He is a ghoul, remember, so we gotta, gotta play that up a little bit here. All right, time for an Irish coffee break. Do you have any Irish coffee for me? Um, no, I'm I'm sorry. No, I, no, I didn't... don't worry about it. See, I wasn't expecting company, I, so... I get it. Just another disembodied spirit, I guess. Oh, come on, don't be like that. It's, no, it's really. It's just that I... It's, it's okay. I guess. Don't worry about it. Are, are you done? Oh, yes. Okay. Quite done. Looks good, though. You know. Wow. <laughs> Temperamental, huh? Okay, so we really want to push his... his cheekbones here. Like this. 
in his eye socket like this. Now we really want to play off the shape of a skull here. So, give him a mouth like this. All right, I'm just gonna Artistic choice on the fly. I'm angling his jaw a little bit and his chin. Like that. Okay. Now. I'm going to change the angle of that hat brim. And let's try in the hat. Okay, now let's go back into his body here. So, right now, what we want to do. We've got this axis line. We've got this um, action line. We're actually gonna put in a coat. He's wearing an overcoat under all of this. So we're gonna drape it over the body shape that we've drawn. And you want to play with fabric creases. In illustration, you want to make sure that you push so many creases in your drawing. You don't want to go overboard and then have too many, but you definitely want the person viewing your art to know exactly what you've drawn. So I got a button here. He has three buttons that show. Just like that. I'm just gonna throw in indication to show that it, they are buttons. All right, and on this side, on this side we wanna do the same thing, but because we're stretching here, we're going to have fewer creases. I want this side to look a little differently from the other side. It makes it look like a more interesting drawing when you do that. Okay. So we've got the coat in. Now let me go in and do his pants here. So again, we're going to do some creases here in the in the underside of the knee. I'm going to push that knee. Got his calf muscle there, like so. Give him a bit of an ankle there. Now let's figure out where to put his foot. Okay, so. I'm going to draw the feet about this big. And because he's wearing Victorian shoes, they had these great big, I don't know if they're called tongues back in those days. Let's see. I don't love that. There we go. That's more of along the lines of where I was going. 
give him a heal and a soul here. Okay. And I want to say... Yeah, I like that. All right, so now on the other side... So now on his other leg... shaped like this from a front angle mm, no I don't like that there you go oh that's much better okay excuse me while I talk to myself you know you could always talk to me you're not gone yet, huh? Nope. Still here. <laughs> Great. You know, you speak with a lot of dramatic flair. Thank you. You ever think of toning it down a little bit? Well, if I did, I might sound more like you. Yeah, we don't need two of me. We certainly don't. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got these arms here and we've got to flesh them out a little bit, so to speak. Oh, good one. Thanks. Okay, so let's see. We want to keep him nice and thin, but we're going to cover all of this anyway. But just for demonstrational purposes here. Yeah, let's take a look at that. And we want to give him that hand, right? So, now hands are one of the most difficult things you'll ever have to draw. But the more you draw them, the easier they get. They have all kinds of tools out there, all kinds of model toys that you can get that'll, that you can pose and use for reference. Or you could always do what I do. And I will take my hand and I will pose it however I want. Now, I, of course, my pencil is in this hand, so I can't do that, right? So I'll do it with my other hand. But if this is the hand I need to pose, I use my left hand and I'll use a mirror, and the mirror will make it look like it's a right hand, and it is the perfect reference. So you don't have to go out and buy expensive models, expensive toys, all you need is a cheap little mirror that people use for makeup. Okay, so now we've got the cane, and that cane is going to look like a finger if I don't shade it in a little bit. The eye likes contrast, so let's give it some. Now I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to darken in the lines for the hat box here. did that okay so with this hand we're gonna see nothing but the front of that hand right so you'll want the middle finger to be the most prominent because it's the biggest one his index finger his ring finger and his pinky, just like so. Oh. All right, 
and then we've got the handle on each side. So now let's go back in. Now we have to give him a cloak. So the cloak has a clasp. And it'll go right there in the center, right under his chin. Okay. Now, this is where we have some fun with draping cloth. like that and then on this side because his arm is lower that cloak yeah we're gonna cover his arm I think that would make the most sense in this sketch all right So what we do is we take the drawing that we already know of what he looks like and then the drapery or the cloak will go over it. Okay. Now we've got this great big bunch of cloth that goes over his wrist. It's got to go somewhere, right? So we're going to continue the cloak down here like this. And then on this side, we'll give it a slight S curve here. Like that. And now we have to connect this. Now you wouldn't just draw a straight line to connect it because that's boring. You wouldn't want to push it in a weird uh, light curve. You want to give it some variation. So, I'm going to now notice I'm drawing right through his his legs here. That's because all of this will be darkened in later and all of these stray pencil lines will be erased. Okay. I'm taking into consideration that this side is up higher. So that's why I brought up this arch just like that. And there we have it. Now we're not done yet. Because that cloak comes with comes with a high collar. I'm gonna obstruct his his chin and his jawline just a little bit. And we're gonna do it again on this side. Let me turn this around here so you can see. Now I am pushing all of these details for artistic effect here, but uh, with this, I'll keep that arch going. Now the only thing left to do is to draw in his hair and his pupils. Oh, and his teeth. We got his teeth to draw too. Okay. So he has this wild, almost dark brown kind of hair thing going on here. These hairs I'll have coming out while these hairs will be obstructed by the, by the collar a little bit. Okay. I want him looking right at us. Little pinhole pupils. All right. And now his teeth. So when I draw the hatbox ghost like this, I like to only draw in his gum line and then give it that very simplistic gritting of teeth there with just the slight lines on either side. I'm 
push that mouth a little bit and then we will give little indications of the bones of the teeth here straight through the mouth all right now it just play with the chin a little bit and there we have it there is the hatbox ghost there we have it now I'll go back and ink this in later on and erase all those stray lines but there we have it all right well there's that is the very nicely oh, done. thank you very much Compliments. Huh. You're welcome. Uh huh. So, if you're interested in more videos, we've, we've got, got some, some more back right here. Thank you. Do you mind if I? Sure. Why don't you take it away? If you would like more videos from Paul, please click here. Thank you. Don't forget to yes, subscribe. Yes. Subscribing would be very nice. Please, we'd appreciate don't it. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until then, we will see you later. <laughs>